Hi, Celine here and welcome back to my channel. Uh, delighted to be talking to you today. I just firstly want to say to you, I'd love if you liked and subscribed to my channel so I can continue to share content with you. Also, there's you can avail of a copy of my free guide, Six Signs You're Getting a Spiritual Wake Up Call, which just by clicking on the link in the description box. And there's lots of other information there about my books and how you can connect with me. So the first, the topic I wanted to discuss today and I've been reflecting on a bit is the whole topic of anxiety. And um, really, uh, I want to discuss sort of the issue of anxiety. Is anxiety really trying to help us or has it a message for us? Um, it's connection with spirituality. And what can we do? There's one important step. The first step I took, I suppose, um, that really made a difference for me in reducing anxiety levels in my life. So I want to just share that with you at the end. Um, so I was supposed to start off just in terms of my own experience. I'm, as I'm talking here, it is from my own personal experience. I've had, I suppose, my life, I feel, you know, suffered a lot with anxiety. So anything I share here is something I've personally experienced, I've learned from, and I want to share with others so that um, it may help them. And I hope whatever I say in sharing my experience and what I've learned will hopefully resonate with anyone who's suffering from anxiety and that you won't feel so alone. We, you know, we all suffer from it at some point or another. It's part of the human condition, but I believe that there is a way to live uh, free of it pretty much. You know, I still get anxious, but I know what to do, um, but I can still suffer from it, but it's very different to the way I used to live. So just to tell you a little bit about myself and my own experience, I would say that from a very young age, really all of my life, I did, wouldn't have been able to put words on it, on it, but I would have had quite an anxious feeling, a little bit nervous, um, not nearly comfortable in my body. Um, just, yeah, a general sense of, I suppose maybe I was sensitive as well, but it was there and I, I can remember a particular experience. I was about seven, I'd say. I was in uh, primary school. And um, it was coming up to lunchtime and my father used to pick um, me up to go home for lunch and his car would be outside. And I just remember that particular day because there was a lot of noise in the classroom. A lot of the children were playing and shouting and as you do at that age. And she wouldn't let us out. She sort of said, I'm not letting you out until you're quiet. And that didn't happen for quite a while or it felt like it didn't happen for quite a while. And I just felt my anxiety levels go through the roof. I could feel my heart thumping. I could feel uh, just my hands were clammy, my stomach churning. And all of it really, without going into it all and what really was going on then, I mean, there was a lot of fear, obviously, and I was afraid of being abandoned and my father going off um, and being out of control. You know, I couldn't stop the other children, that they would stay quiet. So I didn't understand all of that, but it was so real. So um, that's a very real memory that has stayed with me. I think going as I got older, um, I think like all of us, I was ve I became very good at just suppressing. I internalized everything I felt because maybe the society or the environment I grew up in, like for a lot of us, you know, and with Irish people particularly, sort of the the whole emotion side of emotions, you know, we're not great at necessarily um, expressing or being with others in their emotional expression. I think we're hopefully getting better at that. But so that would have been, it was just the way I suppose I was. And um, even as I got older, I always felt I was trying to shoehorn myself into the system and living in a way that felt sort of unnatural. Now, I didn't know what other way to live. Um, because I was quite out of touch with myself and disconnected. But I just remember that that sort of pattern of a low level anxiety stayed with me right throughout my life. I could say up until I was diagnosed with cancer in 2016. Um, that was when the relief started, um, surprisingly enough. But uh, yeah, so I had a long, a long um, experience of it, I suppose. So that's one, I suppose, aspect of anxiety in our lives is our personal our circumstances, our temperaments, our experiences, how we learn to deal with um, life in general. The second big influence, I think, is the environment. And pretty much I was just thinking about it again. 
you know, the environment we're in now and we have been since 2020, the beginning of 2020. And a lot of people when we went into lockdown, I remember talking about, oh, my God, the relief and their anxiety levels being reduced. And then more recently, I'm hearing people go, God, I wonder when we can go back to normal and they're feeling very stressed. And you sort of go, gosh, um, I don't know what normal was like, but uh, I don't think the way we were and the way we were living before we went into lockdown was maybe what you'd call normal. But it was, I suppose, the way we, we had got used to. All I can remember is that prior to 2016, which is when I had my di diagnosis with cancer and I was sort of been out of the system since then, um, you know, I can remember particularly at work, a lot of the environment I was in, it was a very stressful work environment. Um, a lot of my colleagues were very anxious. It didn't seem to matter, you know, whether you got a promotion, you earn more money, whatever happened, it still seemed to nobody's anxiety level seemed to be reducing. It definitely what didn't correlate with material uh, wealth or getting more um, in your life, more physical things or um also i worked a lot with young teenagers at the time so i worked in a university and i was on the road a lot i'd go out to schools i talked to them about going to college making decisions and it struck me it was 10 years doing that job and i i suppose i just got into the habit of it but later as time went on i realized gosh students are getting more and more anxious every single year and it's all connected with this drive to do better, to get better results so they could get into university. And that seemed to be getting harder. And the bar seemed to be getting higher every year. And it was just very, it was very disheartening, I must say, to be not feeling in a position that you could always help because I had quite a specific role around education. But just seeing them at a time in their lives when they really should be very excited about, you know, the next steps and... They were just full of anxiety. So that to me is another aspect of it. And, and I feel very strongly and I and I know and I hope we are coming through and in, into new types of systems. But I think that level of anxiety and fear really, as long as people are feeling that, they can be controlled. And, you know, that's sort of, I believe, how a lot of our systems have been built upon that, you know, um, keeping people in that state and that's all about change I know we're in the process of changing um so yeah so there's the whole personal circumstances and then there's the environment so really when I think about anxiety I think about it in terms of fear um and I would say you know the fear fear stems from feeling powerless in your life feeling disconnected feeling you don't have the ability to control your life or influence it um, I know in my case as well I was very disembodied I was in my head all the time I'd be whirring around with the story and the anxiety would just get worse and I sort of stayed up there in my head um, for me anxiety really is trying to help us you know it's, it's, it's a wake up call you know it's saying you're gone out of equilibrium you're gone out of balance you're gone out of your power you need to come back into your power um, our bodies are supremely intelligent and they are always, they're self-healing, they're always trying to bring us into, back into balance. So if you look at the opposite of that and you say, okay, rather than living from that place of fear, the opposite to me would be living from a place of love. You're in your heart, you're in your body, you have access to your intuition, to the, the voice of your higher self, to your wisdom. You feel your life force, your energy, you're connected to your power source and you're harnessing that to create your life. So that's the ideal way I believe we should all be living and we will all be living. Um, I suppose then the question is, why aren't we? Why aren't we living in that way if we know that's maybe some of us are, uh, maybe some of us aren't. My, my um, belief and knowing for myself is that the real reason we don't is out of our pain and our trauma, our emotional pain and our trauma. That to me is the biggest obstacle to stepping into our spiritual power. So there is a very direct connection between anxiety and spirituality in my life and in my world. Um, so that's, that's, that's a, a difficult one because I think we've all been conditioned and, and I was in my life, you know, to get on with it, to suppress how you feel. I really believe those words, just get on with it, are the most damaging that we can be saying to anyone and to young people. Because 
you know, we're physical human beings. We are emotional, we're physical, we're spiritual, we're mental beings, whether, you know, we like to think of it like that or not. And to truly live, we have to experience and feel everything. That's part of being alive. So I really feel the bravest, truest way you can live is to fully um, experience, feel and express everything in your life. That is the most powerful and liberating way to live. And I think it frees you from anxiety. It has freed me greatly from anxiety. I'm still a work in progress. I have a lot of work to do. Um, but going on that path has been, been so healing for me and so helpful. So I would say the first step to anyone, um, you know, it, it's, it's not an overnight, um, you know, it's part of life. I think it's learning a new way of being in the world and a new way of navigating life. I didn't have any of those tools. I didn't know that it was okay to feel what I felt and to express it. Um, but what happens is when a lot of that um, emotional pain or trauma, you know, may not happen to have been anything extremely serious that happened to you, but trauma is all about what happens inside you. So when that becomes sort of blocked or stuck, it's 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 very um, it's a very difficult place to be. I I know I was there myself, um, and I I suppose my, the point and how I'd like to finish here is really just to maybe um, say that the first step I really feel is 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 about getting help. In, in releasing any trauma, emotional pain, energy that is just naturally, if we don't let it move through us, it gets stuck. So that was a big revelation for me. I got a lot of help, particularly around the time of cancer from various healers, energy healers, people who did body work, um, psychotherapists. I know there are therapists who specifically can specialize in trauma release. There's a lot more I've trained in energy healing as well. So I understand the power of it um, and the power of moving things physically. It's not just enough to talk about them. Um, so that would be my recommendation, my first step. I think it is the most empowering thing you can do for yourself. We all need support. It is absolutely something, you know, if, if there's years and years of a particular way of being, you know, we need help to undo that sort of conditioning and find a new way of being. Um, it's so freeing, I can say, because I've never felt as light as I do now. Um, yes, things happen. Yes, I get stressed. Yes, I get anxious. Yes, I get anxious. Um, but it doesn't. It, it moves through me when I do the right things. So I have a lot of practices I use. Um, I'm going to talk about them in another video because it's quite a lot. And I think they deserve nearly a video on their own. But just to mention, Number one, which really surprised me for is creativity. So important in my life to be expressing myself. And that's how you connect into that power source. And when you're doing that, you're in your heart, you're in your center um, and things flow. You're in a state of flow. So that encourages, I feel, and I felt, felt it myself, sort of an emotional and energy movement. I do lots of other things like I talked about being out in nature, meditation, lots of different forms. I know it doesn't suit everyone. Um, depending on how anxious you are, it's very difficult to go into that still place. I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of journaling. Journaling. Um, I've got interested. I never painted a thing in my life, and I got interested in in drawing again, creativity and painting, just messing around and playing around and being playful. So there's lots of things, um, and I will talk about them again. So I just want to finish up here and say, um, I wish you well and I um, if you're suffering from anxiety I'm very sorry to hear that it's it's very difficult it's um you know but there is help there and I hope by me sharing some of my experiences and things that have helped me it might give you maybe help you feel you're not alone we all go through this at some point but we can free ourselves from that debilitating sort of low level constant anxiety which I personally lived with and I know it is possible so um I look forward to talking you again to you again and just to say to finish up by saying love if you hit the like and subscribe button and my free guide six signs you're getting a spiritual wake up call is available by clicking on the link below also details of my new book which is available to pre-order it'll be published at the end of march gifts from the devastation really documents that story anxiety would be one part of it but it's really my story of overcoming a lot of challenges in my life how i did that 
how spirituality played such a big role in it, the tools I use today and how, what I learned from it um, that I hope will help others. And my other book, The Tapestry of Life, about the power of community, that's also um, available to purchase and it's in the description box. So thanks for listening and I'll talk to you again soon.